He said, because they've been given to me. That the devil told that to Jesus. He said, everything has been given to me. The question is, who gave it to him? Is it God? It was in that fall that he usurped man's authority. You know, took that authority that man was supposed to have over the earth. When man rebelled against God, Satan now took his authority and began to rule this earth. That dominion that man was meant to have, Satan began to run it. I feel what I'm talking about. That's why, okay, let me show you a scripture that will help you. Romans 6 verse 16. Open it. Romans 6 verse 16. So you find out what happened. Watch this. Know ye not that whom ye yield yourself servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom you obey. Whether of sin or death of without the righteousness, he's saying if you yield yourself to begin to obey. Now, the obey there is not talking about obedience as per go and come. The context he's talking about here is the gospel. So you either believe sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. So when man yielded to the devil, yielded himself to obey what the devil said against what God said. He became a servant. He came under the rule of the devil. I what I'm talking about. So God wanted man to rule this earth. Man was going to rule this earth. Satan came and turned his heart. So he believed what the devil was offering him and that brought him under the leadership of the devil. And that's how the devil got all the authority he had that he was wielding over the whole earth. So you see what he did to the nations. Check the Old Testament. Almost every nation of the earth was under his bondage. The only people that escaped was Israel. And even that Israel, he was still fighting. That's something that I'm going to teach you guys one day. You see, what happened during the of Babel and some of those things? Because there are demonic spirits that began to rule over different nations. That's what I'm talking about. So Satan took over the authority of this earth and began to run this earth. What was supposed to be man's now became Satan's own. Why? Whatever, put up like an LT of this. It's a big principle I'm trying to show you here. Whatever that you, you say, don't you realize that you become slaves, the slave of whatever you choose to obey? You can be a slave to sin, which is to death. You can choose to obey God, which is to righteous living. So when man chose to obey the devil, man became a slave of the devil. Are you still here? Came under his authority. So that was how man lost that authority. And that was how the devil got his authority. Because you realize that angels are powerful. But they don't have the authority that man had. So you saw, you saw, you saw man's authority. So man submitted to Satan. So when Jesus now died, Jesus stripped Satan of that authority that he had. You know, when we say that, that the devil is defeated, don't think of the fact that there was a combat between God and the devil. The devil was defeated in the death of Jesus. Because the death of Jesus paid. Now, let me explain something to you. If this, this is on the proper explanation, but I'm going to use it. If someone won an election and then became the, becomes the president or is about to become the president and an opponent comes out and brings up some facts I'm talking about in a working nation. Okay? Brings up some facts about the guy. Says this guy is a drug dealer. This guy is a murderer. And brings out evidence. And then based on that evidence, okay, this is not a power that's an example. I'm not going to use it. Based on that evidence, we say, okay, he will not be our president again. So opponents become president. If someone can appear to prove that that guy is actually innocent of, those, of that crime. Once we can prove his innocence, the other person in power loses that position for the right person to take over. In the death of Jesus, he absorbed man of every offense. He proved that man was all innocent. Paid for everything. So that sin that the devil had on man, which was his rebellion against God, was no more there. I what I'm talking about. That's why you find out that in Jesus forgiving us our sins, you defeated the devil. Because the only thing that the devil had against us was that sin against God. Do you want to explain to you now? Go to Colossians 2. Let me show you. Colossians 2, verse, um, verse 13. Verse 13. And you, being dead in your sins and uncircumcision of your flesh, had he quickened together with him, having done what? 
talk, talk, talk. Having done what? Forgiving you all trespasses. Verse 14. Blotting out the handwriting of Adonis that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Verse 15. And having spoiled Prince Prince and Powers. So how did he spoil Prince Prince and Powers when he forgave our sins, when he went to the cross? Because he took away the only thing that they had against us. So when man in Christ was declared innocent, declared free from sin, declared justified, declared forgiven, okay, that authority that the devil had over him was broken. So when we say the devil doesn't have authority, we are saying that the major thing, at first he didn't have authority in the first place. The authority he functioned with was man's authority. Now that Jesus has paid for the sins of man and reversed the entire system, Satan is back to who he was from the beginning without any authority. I get what I'm talking about here. Without any authority. Amen. Because we realize that when Satan fell, or when man fell rather, which was also when Satan fell, what did God tell Satan? Do you remember? What God told Satan in Genesis 3? Do you remember? After telling him, before telling him that the seed of the woman will bruise his head, he said, the seed of the woman will bruise your head. He said, you shall, but you shall bruise his heel. In other words, Satan now had influence and power over man. That's one of that statement. You shall bruise his heel. But then he shall bruise your head. Talking about when Jesus will go to the cross. That's what I'm talking about. So from that day, Satan began to bruise the heel of man. He was now in charge. He was running this earth, God of this earth, messing things up. So when Jesus now went to the cross and died, he turned it around. So the Bible now tells us in Colossians 2 verse 15 that he has spoiled principalities and powers. Put up like an of this verse. Let's do it together like a mass choir. Are you ready? Let's go. In this way, come on, in this way, in what way? Which way? What is the way he's talking about? When he say in this way, it means there's something else we're talking about from previous verse. What way is that? Going to the cross. Dying on the cross. That is also how did Jesus disarm principalities and powers? By his death. Are you following me at all? Let's read again. In this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. Stan has been disarmed. Are you following me, friends? Put up like Amplified Classic. Message is a very dramatic, has a very dramatic rendering of that verse. But let's Amplified Classic. Oh, glory to God. God disarmed prepared some powers that were arranged against us and made a bold display and public example of them, triumphing over them in him and in it, the cross. Message Bible is very dramatic. You know, said he stripped all the spiritual tyrants in the universe of their sham authority at the cross and marched them naked through the streets. Say amen. amen. So it's all the authority that they have stripped. Are you following me? So he has seized that authority from the devil. God has. In Hebrews 2 and verse 14, the Bible tells us that through death, period of Hebrews 2, 14 and verse 15, oh, glory to God. Go to King James. So he says the children are passed, as much as ten the children are partakers of flesh and blood. He also himself, talking about Jesus, likewise took part of the same, that through what? Come on, are you seeing that? Through what? Through death he might destroy him that had a part of that. That is the devil. Destroy. It's a very strong word. See, Satan is destroyed. That word does not mean that it does not exist again. It's the Hebrew word, the Greek word katagio. Katagio. It means to render someone useless, to, to take his authority from him. He destroyed the power of the devil. He that had a part of that, that's the devil. Verse 15. For and deliver them who through fear of death we are all their lifetime subject to bondage. So when he died on the cross and took the power from the devil, he delivered us from that bondage of the devil. So that authority that the devil had over us, he took it from him. Now it is on this basis that we can begin to cast out devils. Because when he did that, he did one more thing. He took us 
and sat us with himself. Ephesians 2 and verse 6. He said we are seated with him in heavenly places. He raised us, raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So we sat with him. If you don't understand what it means to sit with Jesus, because when people hear heavenly places, when people hear we are, there, we are seated with Christ at the right hand of the Father, what they understand is that um, um, Jesus is sitting like this and then we are at the right hand. And then who is at the left hand? Huh? Sinners are at the left hand. Who is at the left hand? Have you ever read anything in the Bible about the left hand of God? Nothing like that. Because right hand in scripture is not a geographical location. When he says you are still at the right hand, he's not talking about geography. It's, it's not a particular location. He's talking about authority. Right hand in scripture represents authority. And I'm going to show you, for instance, in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse, verse um, 20, you see the Bible talk about the right hand of God, which he wrote in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. What is at God's right hand? See the next verse. Far above all principality and power and so that's right hand. Right hand, whenever you see right hand in scriptures, it means authority. Can I show you one more about this right hand thing? Psalm 110 and verse 1. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your first too. So right hand talks, a place, talks about a place of authority. So when the Bible tells us we are at the right hand, we are, we are seated with Jesus, Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, that's where we are too. What that means is that we have the same authority that Jesus has. So he took that authority from the devil and gave us his own very authority over the devil. So not only is the devil without authority, we have the authority of Jesus. I get what I'm talking about. Now somebody will say, oh sir, Satan doesn't have power. Well, that's not what I said. Satan might have some power as an angel. That's why if you allow him, he can make you sick. I get what I'm talking about. If I allow him, he can mess this up around you. But he doesn't have authority. You know, power and authority are not the same thing. Angels too don't have authority. No angel has, an authority, has authority. He says, sir, what does, what's the difference? The difference is that when you talk about power, power is, you know, an ability. Look, let me use let me use politics to explain it to you. Are you here? There are military men. There are soldiers. There are policemen. They have their guns. They can shoot. We have a president. We have a governor. Who possibly has ever handled a gun all his life? Does not know how to shoot. We not even have one gun. But once he steps out, everybody is following him. The policemen have power. The governor has authority. He might not want to handle any gun, but they can only use that their power on his authority. If they use that power without his authority, it becomes an illegal use. So they will be arrested for it. So that is power. Ability to do whatever. But that is authority. The right to use it. What we have in Christ is not just power. We have authority. Angels are powerful. Angels are created to be very powerful. One angel can take down the whole Nigeria. That's not an exaggeration. That's actually underwritten angels. One angel can take down the whole Africa. They are created. The Bible says angels excel in strength. But angels don't have authority on the earth. They only act on God's word and on our words. That's why an angel can be here. And things are going wrong with you, and you will not act until you now say, In the name of Jesus, I receive my deliverance. The angel is going to act by your words, you give him permission to act. So he has the power to just have the authority to. You see what I'm talking about at all. Jesus told them when he was on the cross, about to go to the cross, he told them, Don't you guys know that I can call my father and he will send me 12 legions of angels now? He said, But how will the scriptures be fulfilled if I do that? In other words, Jesus knew. That he had access to tell so the legions of angels we are gathered watching them crucify Jesus and they couldn't act. Why they have the power to shut down that the whole of Israel, the whole of Rome, shut down every that pilot's life like this, all of them die. But they didn't act because Jesus, the one who had the authority, did not ask them to act. We must know the limitation of the devil. 
That's why for the believer, I'll talk, I'll touch this later. For the believer, for the devil to operate in your life, you have to allow him. You have to give him that right. He doesn't have that right to operate in your life. You allow him by your action or your inaction. We'll look at that on Sunday if God if time permits us. But talk about authority to do things, no. That's why everywhere you find satanic activity on the earth, it is man that authorized him. Either unbelievers, because, because every unbeliever has authorized the devil already in his life. Because the Bible tells us that whoever you obey, whoever you yield yourself to obey, you become a servant of the person. Either unbelievers or believers who have yielded their will to him. So he doesn't have as much rights to mess things up as you think. That's why a believer can bar the devil from his family and he will not come in. I what I'm talking about. Now, he's not automatically going to go because one thing the devil does is that he trespasses. He won't go because you are a believer. But you can stop him from entering. That is your authority. I get to the point. That is your authority. See, the son of a very rich man, there are many people that will protect him. Dogs, soldiers, all of them carrying guns, following him up and down. He can stop them from acting. He can get them to act. That's it how you do with angels. But then even the devil, you can stop him from messing things up around you. Because he was once an angel. So whatever power the devil can never possess is at the level of angels. I what I'm talking about. And even the good angels don't have authority to operate until we give them that authority by God's word. So the devil has been stripped of his authority and his hold over the earth. And the believers have reclaimed their place over this set. Are you getting the point? So you see, Satan might have power, but he doesn't have authority. We do have authority. Philippians 2 verse 9 tells us, Oh, glory to God, that God has given Jesus a name above every name. That name there talks about an authority that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Of things in heaven, of things on earth, of things under the earth. Hallelujah. And every tongue should confess that Jesus is Christ, Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. That name, that authority of Jesus, we have it now. Everything bows to that authority. Things in heaven and earth under the earth. Everything. 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 So this way it is to cast out devils because you have authority over him. He might have power to make people sick. We have authority to stop that sickness. That's why you cannot tell the devil to go and he will refuse. That's what I'm trying to show you. We have authority over him. Are you following what I'm talking about? We have authority over him. We have authority over him. You can't tell him to go and he will refuse. We have authority over him. You can stop him. He can make people sick. We stop the sickness. So that's why when we come to cast out of devils, we don't treat it as though it's a very difficult thing to do. We have to pack pigeon, pack stones, bring oil, bring water, act drama, fast for seven days. No. If you understand the victory of the cross, how that the cross gave us authority over the devil, you will know that it's as good. You know, you know what that's Oh, Father. You know what that centurion said to Jesus? Jesus said, he told Jesus that the, the, the servant was sick. And Jesus said, well, I will come and heal him. And he told Jesus, don't come. Just speak the word. You know what? And he gave Jesus a reason, very perfect reason. He said, I am a man under authority. Watch this. I'm a man under authority. I say, and I have people under me too. I say to one, go. And he goes. I say to another, another one, come. And he comes. And Jesus said, wow, he has faith. You know what I was trying to explain? He's saying, me, I'm a, I'm a boss. I have people under me. If I tell one to come, he will come. He will not hesitate. Whether I'm there or not, once I say come, he will come. So he's telling Jesus, you actually have authority over sickness. So you actually don't have to come to my house to heal my son. Just say go. The sickness will go. And Jesus said, yes, you understand it. So if a centurion, centurion is telling one of his servants, come. The servant will not say, let me finish washing plates and come. You know how soldiers behave. Come. 
be coming now. Go. You go. It's just, to, 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 that's how I operate in my house. And I believe that you as Jesus, you have the same authority I have over these servants. You have, the, have it over sicknesses. So why do you have to come to my house? We are, you know, that I don't have to go to my house to tell my servants to go or come. Once they hear it, they will, they will be. That's why we can cast our demons over the phone. All they need to hear is go. I feel what I'm talking about. It's not power. It's the authority we are using. I get to the point. The president can stand up now and order the whole soldiers in Nigeria to go inside the Misa forest. All of them. And nobody will question him. If you question him, you become a rebel. It's authority. Do you know that even if the president falls very sick and is lying down on his sick bed and has stroke and is managing to talk and then they give him mic is a award also stroke i'm trying to show you he's weak like vegetable i, I, I want also just to to go and start shooting in gombe state they will go the man is physically weak but he has authority i feel i'm talking about him he has authority there's a there's a country in africa that the president is over 90. The man has been president since I was born. Before I was born, actually. You should know the country. He's old. He even urinates on himself in the public. Go to the internet. It's not me that will say it. He has been president for long. The man... If he's coming out, they lead him out. That's actually the wickedness of Africa. We don't like to let go of power. That's nonsense, actually. But I'm trying to say that even at that age, as he's weak, if he says, I almost called him of the country. If he says, let that country now go and fight US. That's why it's not good for leaders to be stupid. <laughs> because if he says, I want my country to fight you. We are declaring war now against Russia. Now, everybody is going to go for that battle, sir. The soldiers who don't want to go will have to run away from the country. Because authority has spoken. Whether he said it from his right mind, that's what the Bible said, woe to the nation whose king is a child. Because once he gives a decree, it will happen. You need to understand authority. That's why on your sick bed, when you're tired in the night, you just had a very stressful day, and you find the devil around you, if you just know what I'm sharing with you, and you just say, ah, hey, you devil, get out of that place. It will obey. It's authority. I get to the point. You are walking along your place, and you find the devil messing up. Say, hey, before I come back, fix that mess. He will fix it. And I, yeah, I get what I'm talking about. A man of God sharing a story of how it, the devil appeared to him, a demon in the house. Then he was in, in his room and had some noise in the parlor. And then he came out and saw a demonic activity. You know what this man said? The man said, Ah, you see you. He went to bed. Real life. Like he saw a parent of the devil in his parlor. He said, Ah, is he you? He went to bed. Came out again on that time and saw the parlor has, was already turned upside down, destabilized. He told who have you heard this before? He told them, he said, if I go in and come out, and you've not arranged this pile the same way it was, where you came, where, before I came out, you will see what I will do to you. He went in, came out, Paul arranged. Everything is not stress. He says, Sir, how is that possible? How is it possible that the demon was scatter palo? If he can scatter palo, you can arrange it. If you believe that you scatter the parlor, then you can arrange it. If I go, and, if I go in and come out, you both is for parlor. It's not me that you come and stress. That kind of authority is what you have. You have principalities. You're about to travel, and they say, oh, that is satanic, whatever, whatever. And the Holy Ghost just says, go. All you have to do is in the name of Jesus, I take authority over every force of fear. It's enough. Is enough. 
So when they go say when the one the day that day their the the engine of their plane failed. You know that story? Was they were on air. The engine of the their, the first jet they got, the engine failed. Totally. Up there. But they came and nothing happened. But he said before they left, normally they pray before they embark on those journeys. But after some time he told them, let's pray again. Father will thank you for this journey. We arrive safely. Amen. After some time, let's pray again. When he said to them, one, one of the assistants said, I so will pray two times. I know. Let's pray again. We prayed until he got that release in spirit and he got on, they got on that journey. Right there up in the sky, the engine of the jet failed. That was the devil. We wanted to waste an entire generation. And by the hand of God, it was fixed. They came down. No hurt, no scratch. The devil knows his boundaries. So all these things we are doing, we want to cast out one devil. We are breaking our head. We say, ah, you can't make it serious. Uh, pay 21,000. Our team of 21 prayer warriors, we go to the mountain to go and fast for you for 21 days. Drama. Drama. African magic epic. A Saba movie. Nonsense. So we go up there and then we pray. Most times you give them that money, they go and eat. So I have to fast and pray to combat, to be able to win the devil. Let me say this to you. I will explain this further. So, what if somebody is living in sin? Can he cast out the devil? <laughs> Let me say something to you. The devil is not even my father's servant. He's my father's dismissed servant. But even if he's my father's servant, if I'm if I'm quarreling with my father, maybe I hurt do something against my father. He said I should wash the car, I refuse to wash the car. It doesn't mean that I would tell my servant, my father's servant, to go bring me water. And he will say, No, I won't go because you disobeyed your father. I get what I'm talking about. He doesn't have that right. All this you cannot cast out because because you are living in, because there is sin. I will still come to sin and why you should not live in sin. You know I preach that a lot, but let me say this to you: When you command the devil, the Bible did not say he will flee from you. If you are perfect, you fasted. He said, "Resist the devil, he will flee." You see that thought of "Are you perfect? Are you casting the devil?" Is even the devil putting you in that bondage? He's the one telling you. Imagine the devil is trying to convince you that you cannot cast him because you are not too perfect. I got what I'm, what I'm saying. When you finish, sort your issues with God. Repent. Get better. But don't ever think that you walk up to the devil and say, hey, you go. You say, you're not qualified. You know, I love the way Michael rebuked the devil. A story in the book of Hebrews. Have you seen that story? When the devil came to fight for Moses' body. That's not Hebrew. That's not Hebrew. That's um, uh, I think it's James. Can I remember? He came to fight for Moses' body. And then Bible said Michael just told him, The Lord rebuke you. That was all. <laughs> the Lord rebuke you. All this fight of you know, the devil is fighting, we're going to fight him, let's win. So, you come, come out from spiritual warfare, you're looking very tattered. You don't try to no beat up the cross. The man you're fighting against has been defeated already. He doesn't have that authority again. You can just say, Hey, stop, and it will stop. He said, It will stop, not he. They get to the point. So, the devil may have power. Because when you say there's no power, he might have power at the level of angels. But we have authority at the level of Jesus. At the level of God. Okay, that's Jude. Yet Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed with the devil, disputed about the body of Moses, does not bring him a real accusation, but said, the Lord rebuked him. That was it. That's how to deal with the devil. The Lord rebuked you. Get out of my finances. You're troubling that sister. Trouble her no more. Come out of her. And from there, it begins to vibrate and flies out. It's not they are trying to well, act like we're fighting. And that's what I told you guys of that first deliverance I conducted where we even fought. 
everything happened in that deliverance it was childishness that matter should not have lasted more than let me say, let me, you know, personally I believe that even if you partner with the devil if I drive the devil out of you to go that after he goes you can bring him back when you guys go when you guys go to have your meeting but I can't, I can't tell the devil to go and you refuse and that's the authority every believer has so when you get to your home and you notice that there is some satanic whatever rebuke it and ask it to go and when you rebuke the devil and ask the devil to go, believe that your prayers worked. Because that's the problem. We've been casting one devil for the past two years because we don't even believe what we are saying. The victory is won. Jesus has won the victory. We have authority over the devil. So am I saying there's no spiritual warfare? No. I'm only saying we must do it right according to God's word. Jesus has defeated the devil. So when we find someone that is being oppressed by the devil, all we have to do is to command that devil to lose its hold. In the name of Jesus, thou foul devil, come out and he's going to jump. They met, demons met Jesus. He has not said the word, he said, Jesus, son of David, have you come to destroy us before our time? So they actually know that time is limited on the earth. Remember what I shared with that of facts. They know. And then I told Jesus, oh yeah, we know you will cast us. I just tell us to enter pig. Why didn't they just jump into the pigs? They don't even have rights. I feel what I'm talking about. You need to know the authority you wield over the devil. So it's not like we're about to fight. It's not what starts. We everybody just gather, we have our gun, set our eyes his own, he said, let's start, in the process they may break your leg. No. It is flawless victory. Because Jesus already has won that victory for us. Do you know what is flawless victory? Did you play Mortal Kombat? Did you? Okay. I mean, keep a flawless victory. That one, it means, it means you beat the person and the person didn't even have one punch. Even one touch. Your life is still full. That's what we have over the devil. It's actually, that's why the Bible tells us that we are more than conquerors. Because actually, we are not the ones fighting the battle. The battle has been fought. We just enforce the victory that Jesus has won. So we are not trying to take a word it from the devil. We are trying to remind him that he has been defeated. So, hey, Father devil, get out of this place. He wouldn't say, Ah, why, why, why should I go? Let's negotiate. He can't do that. So you find him in someone's health. You find him in someone's business. You go for evangelism on Saturday. You find someone being tormented by the devil. It's not a big deal. I will say more things, but I just tell you, it's no big deal. If you understand the authority of the cross, say, you know, there's a demon that is messing this around you. But we can drive him out now. Are you ready? I get to the point. You know, all this, and I'll close with this now. All these things people are doing against God's word. That's only really the wrong way. You know, you know, um, native doctors cast out devils. Do you know? Yes. But let me tell you what they do. They appease those devils. So they ask you to bring sacrifices, bring all of these things. They appease. It's like pleading with the devil. You know that kind of thing. So they will just say, bring ram, bring this. You now bring it and say, hey, I began to prosper. They are, that's what they tell you to do. Have you heard what I'm saying? When they say, oh, this is not for that guy and his family, they now say, oh, they have to appease some gods that their forefathers do, whatever. They say, bring ram, bring this. We don't appease the devil, sir. That's what the Bible says. They didn't say, to plead with the devil, appease him. And that's what they're doing in church. You want deliverance? You know, I heard somebody say to somebody, that somebody took your name to a native doctor and took cow there to kill you and if you're going to be free from that bondage you have to bring something bigger than cow have you heard such things and i told the person tell him you brought something bigger than cow you say what the blood of jesus <laughs> crazy stuff we don't do that that's what i'm going to close by saying to you i've given that one if i want to give it again eastern nigeria Igbo people all this foolish thing you people are doing they are going back to your roots. You claim you are in church. 
I will address this more next Sunday. But you are pissing devils. Say, things are not making work for you. He says, because you've not brought cow, you've not brought goat, and your family will come back and do it. You just appease the devil. You pleaded with the devil. He didn't go. You just appease him. And once you appease him, you will keep appeasing him. That's why you see every day telling you to make that sacrifice again. You keep doing that forever. Why are you cooperating with the devil? What business does the temple of God have with idols? What business? Drive out that demon from your home. Drive that from your home. Which one is they bringing cows so that the devil will not be angry? Just like telling the devil, okay, I know you are tormenting us. Okay, no verse, no verse. Just hold this one. He said, eh, you come back next day. Say, yes, I promise. That's what I'm doing. And you think the devil is someone you can do business with. He's coming for your children. He's coming for your children. He's coming for your family. He's coming for everything in your home. He will come for your children. It's a matter of time. And if you've done that appeasing of the devil, stop it already. Command the devil to get out of your home. Command him. If you don't know what to do, come and tell me. I'll tell you what to do. Charge him out of your space and out of everything you're doing. Which one is begging the devil? trying to bring cow, bring this, that he will not be angry. Bring cola nuts. A man of God that says he wants to pray for himself, you bring cola nuts and bring cow and bring pigeon. He's not using the power of God. Or he's using the power of God. He wants to eat your money. So if we are bringing cow and bringing pigeon and all of this, what would we have done if we had gone to Native Doctor's house? It's not the same thing. Native Doctor's are peace. That's why in Igbo, in Igbo language, I say, okay, bring it. That's what it's just to offer something to the oracle that the oracle will leave here alone. And you want to bargain with the devil? You think he will go? That's why you watch all those people, their children keep having issues. Some of you that are here, who God has helped your parents to step out from those idolatrous things. Don't take yourself back and don't mess with the future of your children. Some people today in Ibo land, I'm so sure that their children will suffer. I'm not God, but I'm sure. They've done enough to mess their lineage up. Since I can't God help them, God will help them. If the children find God, they now have to start going through the process of driving the devil out. You know those kind of things. But you can actually help yourself. Why are you trying to why are you trying to plead with the devil or to enter agreement with him? Whereas you can simply tell him to get out and he'll get out. Don't cut any deal with the devil. Though. He's a trespasser. I hope you know that. He doesn't keep his own part of the bargain at all. He's not a gentleman. What do they call it in Iboland? I say, I say, it's like a swarf here or something. Start goes to the yellow, so your doors will open. That's nonsense. That's idol worship. He say, ah, so probably say they went to the daughter's house and they showed him a vision. They, they brought out a mirror and he saw his father that, that has died and grandfather. I was telling him what to do. The Bible calls it the worship of the dead. They're worshiping dead people. And that's dead people you are worshiping are in hell. So what is happening in familiar spirit? Do you remember when Samuel went to meet a witch and the witch called up the spirit of Samuel? Well, Saul went to meet a witch and the witch called up the spirit of Samuel. That was a familiar spirit. I came and told him some things. Don't do that. Don't consult witches. Because you are entering agreement with one devil to fight another devil. Have you forgotten the scripture we read last week on Sunday? A kingdom against itself will not stand. So the reason that demons are going to leave alone is because the demon you are consulting is in agreement with the demon that is tormenting you. So you just have a handshake on your matter and say, okay, right, right, I'm going to I'll, I'll run now. One day they will team up and show you how, they used to, how poverty used to happen. So you now find out, but I'm saying this when I'm saying by the Holy Ghost. They now find out after they visited the native doctor, doors now open. But children are now falling sick up and down. Because the devil will never leave you alone. The Bible calls him the father of all life. The Bible calls him a murderer from the beginning. The Bible calls him an accuser. All of those he is. He can never stop being who he is. We are negotiating with a man that envied you from the beginning. Where you are the reason for his fall. Are you what I'm talking about? That negotiation will never stand. 
So, children begin to fall sick. Things begin to happen. And most of these genetic doctors thrive with the deception. Deception. Amen. But because I know there are fake pastors. There are some fake pastors. There are some true pastors. But every native doctor is fake. See what I said? Every native doctor is what? Fake. Honey, they fake. It's to say that is even you. You get the point? You heard about I know, the actor that died yesterday. Sad news, actually. Sad news. You know what is more sad? That they contributed in killing him. You know, there are some things that she won't go back to our route. Very sad news. When they said the guy resuscitated and all that, why didn't they take him to the hospital? They took him back to the shrine to appease the water gods. To see that he will survive. And they now said he came back. And somebody... Somebody already began to write on Facebook yesterday. Who saw some of those things? Saying, is the children that revived him or is not your Jesus? And then he now died. Nonsense. First, I was sure if it was a good pastor they took him to, the pastor would have prayed and said, take him to the hospital. Because spirituality and medical science are not quarreling. That's what I'm talking about. But because we want to go back to our roots. We traded somebody's life for going back to our roots. And I told the story because if it was a church, they carried him to and he died. <laughs> uh, social media was shut down. Uh, if you not even be in church today, they will drag all of us. <laughs> Sad news. Avoidable thing. Death that was totally avoidable. I'm not saying there are no water spirits. But how can a water spirit claim somebody's life? And you think you think by appeasing the water spirit. A lot of you think the devil is very kind. <laughs> people, are, people are making love. Yeah, devil. They say, I love you. They say, I love you too. They say, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Just <laughs> if you know the devil, go and read about him in the Bible. He has done a lot. The man is wicked. The man is wicked. Go and read about him. Read about the devil. Read about the woman that sits upon many waters. Bible says she drinks the blood of the prophets. That's my want to can sign contract with. Get about that woman that sits upon many waters. You want to come enter a deal with her? I say, oh, okay, you know what? Um, since you don't take him, just it will keep demanding. Is it not in this same Africa we're going back to our roots that there are idols that demand human sacrifices? This is this is our roots. They sacrifice seven virgins to idols. Our root. People are signing contracts with Satan. This root. I want to go back to. <laughs> we might not come back. Don't fall for that nonsense. Christianity did not do Nigeria bad. Ah, even the fake Christianity did Nigeria good. The fake, I mean, even the fake Christianity. Did Nigeria good and better than ATR has done us in how many years? I come from a community that worship idols very well. The idol in my village did not like electricity. Real life story. You know why? Because that idol in my village, when, it, when the masquerade comes out at night, ladies shouldn't see it. Strangers shouldn't see it. But when there's electricity and there's street lights everywhere, you can be right inside your house and you're seeing real life story. They removed that idol in my village. That the next year electricity came into my village, sir. So what's good? We have the churches are busy. They're not building schools. As a matter of fact, 50% of schools in Nigeria are owned by churches. Ask Anglican, Catholic, Baptist, Methodist, Pentecostals, 50 of schools are owned by churches. Churches even own hospitals. I'm yet to see Ogugu Specialist Hospital. <laughs> I 
our mother had committed secondary school. Owned by, by a shrine. Don't cooperate with the devil. He will not leave you good. I feel what I'm saying. If you find him in your face, cast him out. Don't sign contract with him. He never keeps his own end of the bargain. Never. May God help you. But the day you say, Mother, I'm specialist hospital, let me know. The level of deception in ATR is mad. You know, you think native doctors are poor. They are very rich. Sure, you are telling me you handle the contract for one native doctor. You think he's wrong? He's wrong? Handle the contract. Duplex. Native doctor. And the man even told him at a point that all these things they are doing is wrong. I'm real life story. Funny thing, how the man met him, the man saw him on the road and said, I know you. He told the man, I don't know you. He said, I know you. You're a spiritual person, I'm a spiritual person. He said, I know you. In the process, he began to tell the, began to tell the all these all these things you are saying, all those um and the gym dog banje, all those kind of things that are rubbish, uh, deceiving people. He was telling him. Real life story. It didn't happen in the eighties. This year. This year. Last year. This year. Last year. And we are trying to control his title. He was telling me we are just deceiving everybody. He was, tell, he was telling him. But you know the problem? That same devil will now make people not to see anything wrong with what it is doing. The problem people have is with the church. There is power in the name of Jesus. No matter what anybody says. I've tasted and I've seen. I get to the point. If anybody says there is no power, bring the person here. There is power. That demon that is tormenting you, if you come here, it will go. There is power. You don't even need to come. You need to meet any member of our church. You'll be fine. So why carry people from native doctor? I don't, I don't do such things. Even recently, my family called. Not my nuclear family now. Standard family called. And said uh, that the prophet said that they went to how many prophets? Asha Shane with this. They went to many prophets and many native doctors. One of them were saying the same thing that there's something our forefathers uh, promised one idol. And the, the idol is demanding it. That that's why they're not progressing. I say, people are not progressing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not joking. And you see the deception. They called me and said um, that we should come by. I said, Why are you calling me? So that they want to, they decided to bring that even he want, they even visited pastors and prophets and they recommended this same thing that we need to bring um kill goats. But so, somebody in our lineage promised one eye to goats, we need to kill goats and share, share to people. So I was just quiet. And then he said, I know you're a pastor, I know you will not want to do this. That's why I'm calling you. So that you know, when you come, we even do it in a Christian way, you will pray. You will speak, bless the goats, we will not kill it. <laughs> like, I'm telling you, it happened last year. <laughs> I was not in the mood for any stress. That I think we we're planning this away. I say, okay. When is the date? Say, next Friday. We are coming. <laughs> so that morning, my phone was ringing. <laughs> I'm not a party to that. One, I'm progressing. Uh, it's not by faith. I'm really progressing. My life is moving forward. And even if my life is not moving forward, no, now. You think you share goods this year, not share next year? Huh? You keep sharing goods. From goods, you will share cow. From there, you offer human being. The devil is not that, it's not that foolish as you think he is. The first word used to describe Satan in the Bible is serpent. That's a wise animal. So you think you're dealing with someone that is not smart. He's we. After killing that goat now, you just, by next week, you make, you make 700,000. You say, hi, yeah, now walk. It's working. After two months, 700,000 will finish. You go back and ask them, they'll say, oh, another goat. 
You are now a constant worship. You've joined court. <laughs> you just don't know. Don't be afraid of the devil. Don't cooperate with him. Don't enter covenants with him. On Sunday, I'm going to show you how to allow the devil mess up your life. Oh, this one, what I'm showing with you is one. Once you begin to visit creative doors and witch doctors, you've opened your door to the devil. I'll show you on Sunday. But for now, just know that Jesus has won over the devil. Are you blessed? God bless you. Package your offering. Let's, let's, um, our time is spent. I was done, I must, our time was spent like, normally since it's it, just package your offering. That time was done a long time ago, but then um, I just had that in my spirit to say that. Amen. Glory to God. You see why, why I mentioned the story of that actor? I have nothing against the, uh, the Nollywood, whatever, but I'm just trying to say it still goes back to that issue I mentioned about superstition. Extremes. Even if, even if it was a water spirit that dealt with that guy, why not take him to the hospital? I don't know what I'm talking about. Then let's start appeasing it from there. People here, their children fall sick, their friends fall sick. When they call me, I said, okay, just go to the hospital. I will pray. Now, don't think I don't believe in my prayer. I believe in my prayer more than I believe in my name. I believe in my prayer too much. Because my name, somebody told me that my name was Henry, but my prayer worked for me. But I can tell you, go to the hospital. God is not anti-science. Except it's done with a case where we are seeing that, okay, there's a satanic manipulation here and the hospital will not work. Bring him to church. I'll show you what to do about that. I get what I'm, I get what I'm saying. But with superstition driving to extremes. That's the problem. I'm not saying that my, that my number of water spirit has affected whatever happened. But both capsize for different reasons. For carelessness too. I get what I'm talking about. So don't spiritualize everything. And not only with that taking the right action because that incident, spirit or no spirit, was avoidable. Totally avoidable. It was foolishness and carelessness. So before we even go spiritual, it was avoidable. No lifeboat. A life jacket. It's not Amani you are crossing. Do you know Amani? It's my the village, the stream in my village. You are crossing River Niger. Have you ever seen that River Niger? I will never cross that thing. <laughs> it's only plane I'm using to fly over. Jesus Christ. I mean, you get, you get, you look far, you will not see the end of the river. Yeah, and then, you are shooting fish. <laughs> Very avoidable. It's not just because they went to it, even in the Christendom. And some things that happen now, just tell myself, this thing is avoidable. Let's not empower the devil. I'm sorry, I was raised to something, I'm saying no. But at least you do empower the devil to mess your life up. A student will not read a whole semester. Two weeks to exam. Student wants to cram everything. That failure was avoidable. I'm talking to you. Some things are avoidable. Some sicknesses are avoidable. Some deaths can, could have been avoided. Ah, one of our dear ones lost someone. I was just telling you, this was, this was so avoidable. So, you know, I tell some of my, my pastors, you know, people that are under me know okay if I, if I train you slow down and totally eliminate night journeys all this one night that you hit the road sometimes not even your car you are carrying you enter for one driver you don't know whether you just came out from a beer parlor some things can be avoided don't empower the devil to mess your life I know what I'm saying you know how I stop traveling at night? You, you, you know me now. How many of you know me from the onset? I, I live in the night. I used to use a perfume called Night Walker. That perfume was my life. <laughs> I walk at night. I've left from here to Makodi around 8 in the night. Mm. And I wasn't scared. I'm not, I'm not a very fearful person. It, we arrived at one uncertain time. <laughs> What? And this was a problem. 
Sometimes, you know, some of, and some of these drivers, I don't know whether they have spare life. The cars they will bring out, we don't have lights. But we just enter. One day, God spoke to me, and my pastor dictated that to me one day. He said, you don't know that you are, you, you are you're a man of God. You're a father. People's life are tied to your life. You cannot live carelessly. Because something happens to them, it's not just about you and your family that will mourn. An entire generation may be lost. That's how I stopped. Something is about it. Now, of course, it doesn't mean I'm not afraid. It doesn't mean there's a situation that warrants moving at night. I can move at night. I'm not afraid of anything. I what I'm talking about. But to deliberately expose yourself to just unto we are faith men, we are faith men. We are faith men. Safety is of the Lord. Safety of the Lord. Why do you see trailer come and run away from the road? Stand there. Safety is of the Lord. What is she? So there's there is, there is wisdom. <laughs> you know, we're going to get to extremes. Some things are totally avoidable. I get what I'm saying. They're avoidable. You're driving a car, your brake has been giving you sign. That's why, you know, sometimes I feel Nigerian drivers are possessed. You see, most drivers, they need prayer. Your brake is giving you sign. Some of them drive, some of these big lorries drive and carry hydraulic. I don't know what that means. They know that their brake is bad, so they will go small and pour brake fluid inside and keep moving. Why? And they are carrying a big car, long car, long glory. So many things are totally avoidable. So why we know that there is satanic manipulation and all that? I get the one I'm talk, trying to talk about. Don't be superstitious. And don't empower the devil in your life. He doesn't have as much power as he's claiming to have. We are the ones empowering him in our lives. Did you learn something today? May God help you. So students, I just gave you a very sharp warning. Read your books. It's not when we come for start fire and I shout in, Amen, Amen. That exam will turn out good. Amen. Because you know you failed. That's why, you know, if, you know that even if you mark your script, you will fail. <laughs> Take your life seriously. Because well, this balance is needed when, when we're dealing with deliverance ministry. It's very much needed. There's somebody has spirit wife, spirit husband. That's why she's not getting married. Sometimes the spirit husband is bad character. And no matter how you try to explain it, that you know the overdoing, that is bad character. And people don't marry bad character. People that marry bad character run away from bad character before it's two months. Do you want to live with bad character? No. So you have spirit wife. Sometimes you don't have nothing. No matter how work they try to make you feel. Okay, if you don't, there are young ladies, I have nothing against you. But let me tell you, if you are here, don't know how to cook. Don't know how to do things in the house. Go and learn it too. Because you may not marry. And you say, sir, what if I marry? If you marry someone who doesn't care about those things, but doesn't really care about many things. He says, sir, it's good to live for women. No. Men should also learn to go, but you. <laughs> Just learn it. I'm not here to fight with your feminism thing. Learn how to cook. Learn how to clean the house. I'm now advising you. Tomorrow, you're not saying there's a demon after your marriage. Maybe not. Amen. There's a sister that was trusting God to get married. And, you know, she was getting older. Nobody was coming. You know the point, she was in a big church, but the thing she has one, she has one character of, of some have read this story, wearing, dressing like a married woman, you know, wearing all this, and she liked babies. So all her friends were already married. So whenever she comes to church, she carries their babies and all that, just like a married woman. So they kept praying. So one day the pastor called her and said, All these things you are wearing, change your wardrobe, ma. He said, why? I just like if I act when I didn't free now. Nah, <laughs> he said, change your wardrobe. And she agreed. And the pastor said, please stop carrying all these children. And with time, she found a man. No, the problem was, the day they announced that wedding in church, a brother came, realized, and was crying. The brother was already married. He said, God told me you are my wife. 
But I told God, how can you be telling me that somebody's wife and mother is my real life story? <laughs> real life story, I'm telling you. I've read this before, right? God told me about it. How can you be telling me, God, what are you saying? This, so, see the children now. See. Finally, she stopped wearing that thing. And, ah! So, you see, something is not there for you. Just, you're just being stupid. Brother wants to get married. Yes, you can't dress properly. It's all the sisters are turning me down. If you're a sister, will you not turn yourself down? You say they don't like me. Will you, do you like yourself? So, that's why if you dress, look at us in the mirror and find out if you like yourself. Singles connect is coming. Are you better prepared to be there? They are dressing as though you're a beggar. What's wrong with you? You think life is most difficult for you? Huh? Say amen. Uh -huh. So that, so that we will not, not be fighting with God, talking to us. God said, marry. Say no, Lord. <laughs> now that's just the dressing. That's character. But there are many other things that will spiritualize that are not really very spiritual. Okay? You want to get married, you want to get married with a serious brother, a serious sister. Yet you don't come to church. But if, if you come at all, after church you go home. You're not a worker. How will you get married? You don't come out every time you are, you are inside your house. Conference, you will not come. Zoe, you will not come. If you come for Zoe, you just come for one session and go home. After Zoe, sit back and interact with people. Say hi, hi, hi. That's how they used to do it. Say amen. Now we are doing follow We are going to do evangelism and publicity for evening of answers. Come out. Let's win souls for the Lord. But for real, I may talk about it as singles connect. Why do you do you think if Ruth had remained in her house that she would have found Boaz? Is that what it is? Do you know she Naomi said she should go? Now when Boaz began to pick interest, I said I'm gonna explain that one of these. Naomi told her to go to Boaz's house. And stay there. That's well, let's not go into that. But I'm just trying to tell you that many things we shouldn't spiritualize too much. Amen. Your bad character should stop. Want to marry a brother, but any small thing, your temper is at 100 degrees centigrade. Is that not going to take that? Let me ask you will you allow yourself to marry your sister with this kind of dangerous temper that you have? He said, you know me. You don't cross the line. People should be able to cross the line and stand on the line. And you won't do anything. <laughs> because when you get married tomorrow, your spouse will not just cross the line. She will live across the line. That will be her place. She, she, she will never come. She will stay across that line. You, are so, you don't like people crossing your line. So why? you don't want to marry. Say amen. Say somebody can cross my line. Ah, say, say somebody can cross my line. <laughs> and there is no problem. <laughs> but there are people who are really not getting married because there are satanic interferences. I've come to a family, five women, all of age, all beautiful, all not married, all of them the same story. People come for introduction and go. All of them the same story. One of them told me five people have come. Come for introduction, bring things, say, we are coming next week, they will never come back. All of them the same story. That family, I think, I went with you, I went with you to that family. That family, many people ate my stew and, and chicken, yes. The, everybody, because it was very dramatic, we even bombed. That was the place I told you guys to go to. We gathered their idols. You guys remember, put fire on it, they refused to burn. Hmm? They asked them, they were there. It's not like I'm not for this story. Ask Pastor Chidi, ask Pastor Jude, all of them were there. Put fire. Fire did not burn. I said, Don't worry. Shaka bala bada bada bada. Put the fire again, it began to burn. Real life story. Went in that day, began to counsel all of them. All of them. They've come to marry me. After everything, they say they don't want again. Same story. Now, that's not where you give counsel. That's not where you begin to say, Dress well, eat well. Mm -mm. An enemy has done this. I follow what I'm talking about. You must be wise. God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> Baggage your offering. Baggage your offering. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Baggage your offering. Second Connect is coming. 28 April. Write it. 
3.30. Whether you are married or you are single, be there. Glory to God. We will connect you and disconnect you as the case may be. Because there can be no connection without disconnection. Mm. Do you understand? <laughs> because for real, some people need to be disconnected. Because some people are praying to get married, but they are not single. So how can you want to get married, but you are married? God is seeing you in the spirit like somebody is in your life. And you are telling God you're alone. Huh? Lose him and let him go. My God. <laughs> so prepare for that meeting, 3.30 p.m., 28. Our dress code is um, Jean and the shirts. Okay? The 28 April is the last Sunday of this month. So service will end earlier that day by 11 a.m. And you go home. We we'll return by 3.30 p.m. Gather all your friends. It's going to be a very beautiful time. We're making it more beautiful this time. Amen. So it's going to be like um, a proper, proper, you know, cool event. We're going to have round tables. We're going to sit around your tables. It's going to be a very beautiful event here. Amen. So look sweet. Look good. Amen. And God's word will be taught. Most importantly, God's word will be taught. The power of God will be in oppression. Never doubt that. Fire will fall. Demons will be cast out of people's head. <laughs> but most importantly, we're going to learn the wisdom of God for relationships. Amen. So prepare for that. The message for this week is a superior system. Superior system. Listen to it. Book for the month is the God you never knew. And our AC project remittance is ongoing. So please remit your own AC project or AC pledge. Okay? Uh, many, many people are doing that already. So complete that this week. The, day, the last day will be on Sunday. And I'm not afraid. I know you will meet us before that day. God is going to provide for you. I get what I'm talking about. You will have more than enough to do that. So remit that already. So that um, from next week, we'll place the order. Amen. For the AC from next week. Trust in the Lord. Um, plus, or I, don't know when, I don't know how long it will take the company to get it here. But just know that once the remittance is over, we'll start working on it. In no distant time, we'll have the, the building we've been, the, the, the hall we've been looking for. To, amen. Where Thursday service like this, you're not sweating. Amen. So that somebody is saying that with the kind of prayer heat we generate inside this place, that even the, in the AC you will sweat. But if that, you know, if, if you sweat under AC when you pray, there's no problem. Once you sit down in a few minutes, you know, it's dried up and you're enjoying God's word. That's why I cannot teach for seven hours. And you will not complain. We should not buy again. <laughs> Amen. So, remit that, that pledge. And, you know, let me share something with you. Um, I was talking with someone yesterday evening. Well, I've overstayed our time. But I'm just enjoying what is happening. It's raining, actually, so you cannot actually go. So, so <laughs> I was talking to someone yesterday evening, or yesterday night, Last year, I, I was in a, in a meeting by my pastor. I'm saying this to encourage some of you. You know, last year, December, we for that meeting. And that meeting, we really spent a lot to be in that meeting. We really spent a lot. A lot of that time, I wasn't married to my wife, but we went together because she had to, had to take her to meet with my spiritual parents and all that. So there was a lot of spending, flights, here and there. And, you know, when we got there, we were not married, so we couldn't even use, we couldn't use the same hotel rooms. So we paid for different rooms. A lot of spending. And so throwing into hundreds of thousands. And then after the whole event, you know, I already had what I had planned to give, you know, so into the love of my pastor. I do that in every meeting I attend. Every meeting. But it's, it's not offering. Apart from offering, so I had that set aside. So, and then, so my finance was actually on the low side. So, a day before the end of that meeting, my dad came up to the stage and said, you know, that they want to decorate their hall. They want to do Christmas decoration. Remember? You know, and that the company they contacted said it was going to cost, I think, one point something million or so to put Christmas decoration. And so he wanted, and they just finished building their, their house, their, their church, that they built in less than two months. So people that given and given, people even sold their cars and all that. So he said, well, that he needs at least um, 50 people. How many people that will give 50,000? 
just about 20 something people also i give 50k now i didn't plan to do that but while i was just sit, stand sitting there people are coming out i was just sitting so in the process of time i just felt 50k you know the holy ghost i felt that prompting you go do that to set up this church so i went out and you know i felt also my pastor wanted me to be out there you know one of the things you must learn is to understand the heart the eyes of your father Everything should be said to you. That's what I'm saying. I was teaching somebody yesterday on how to interpret the silence of a father. I ever chatted me up and I didn't talk to you. Every silence is waiting. But not for today. So I just figured what was happening. So I just went and did, well, I went out and gave the money from nothing. Just gave it. And one of the prayers he prayed that day when he was blessing us, he also prayed, you know, that for set men that are here to give and all that, that the way you are helping set up this church, that God will set up your own ministry very soon with properties and all that. And I said amen. And from that December till now, it's been from one addition in this church to another. Did you observe that? From one addition to another. Between that time and now, upgraded our sound, changed our generator, we're getting our AC, all of them within a period of, that's less than four months, not December till now. Okay? Some of these things actually work. I've never told this story to you guys before. But then, one of this is actually work. When you obey the Lord and you give this way, as I'm going to say, say some of you, but I'm not remitting this place, I'm going to put a prayer for you guys. You see, you're giving to set this house up. God will set your house up for you. You will find it happen for you supernaturally, so much so that when you want to begin to bring this into your house, it will be stress-free. It will be without stress. God does such things. I just shared a story with you now. I don't want to go into my own life, but it's the result of this in this church. I just gave 50k to participate in that. And the next day they put the Christmas decoration and all that. Okay? And then, from that time till now, I get to the point. It's been one addition after another addition. Without stress. Some of the things we've added in this church between December and now used to be one-year projects. Have you observed? Ministers will tell you. It used to be one year. Sometimes two years projects. But then within a very short time, God is adding things to us. And we're getting better. So I'm, I'm, I'm already telling you, before the end of this year, there will be many more things. I told you, we're going to put our last screen on this, on this stage. I told you, right? And everything, we're going to set this place up properly. And it will happen in a stress-free way. Because words have gone ahead. And I'm telling you, it will be the same story in your own life. You will not struggle to acquire properties. You will not struggle to acquire properties. You will not struggle to acquire the things that you need. God will send help for you from every side. In the name of Jesus. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord increase you. In the name of Jesus. So just as you're giving to the DC project, give in faith. Things will be better. You will testify this way too. I get what I'm saying. You will testify this way too. So believe God. So package your offering. It's your first time of worshiping with us. We want to say welcome. This is the other platform church. Our vision is to raise the people who have knowledge of God's word, who of the Spirit, and who are committed to ministry. If you, want to, if you love God, I want to be strong, you work with God. Don't go another place. This is your church now. Welcome. Start doing PGTI. <laughs> because you've come to your church. Amen. Amen. Ask your neighbor, say neighbor, or brother or sister, whichever one. Have you done your PGTI? Basic. Find out and get an answer person. If the person has not done, ask the person, when are you starting? So enroll for PGTI basic classes. <laughs> You'll be blessed. Amen. Let's take our offering charge together, everybody. Do you have faith that God will provide all your needs? Yes, Let's go together. Let's say, Father, Father you, are you are my source. Unlimited, unfailing. Because the Lord is my good shepherd. I do not lack. I do not want any good thing. But he always causes me to have all sufficiency in all things and to abound to every good work. Thank you, Lord, for increasing us and our children, for blessing us richly and making us a big blessing to a lot of people to your glory, to your honor, for the furtherance of the gospel, 
in Jesus name shout amen somebody do you know what is happening to us in this church let's say quick together everybody we are getting our buildings we are getting our lands we are getting our vehicle our houses we are getting our vehicles you know last last us I told them to change his equipment to equipment but you know by the time we check the dictionary this was actually correct you understand equipment doesn't have plural I never knew it since the last Thursday. Are you surprised? My dear, we are in this, this English language. Is <laughs> we want to put it. <laughs> the land that it doesn't have, it's just, it's just like sheep. And what are sheep? Emma. <laughs> they like sheep. So after they met me, after the meeting, I said, sir, this, I said, wait, I changed the channel. I said, ah, okay, we are getting our equipment. You want to add S? <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's continue everything we need to do the will of God and to enjoy life on a high level after a godly sort and for a good witness. All of our bills and debts are being reduced and eliminated. We claim extra coming in and we are paying everything off very quickly. Hallelujah. The Lord is bringing us into the best shape of our lives thus far. He's bringing into our hands seeds, even some great, big, whooper chunk seeds. We receive them and sow them where he shows and directs us. And what do we see, friends? We see great Hold on with the offering basket. We just take our closing charge. Hold on with it first. Take our closing charge, then we begin to give that offering. Amen. What part of this confession is living rent free in your head? <laughs> Amen. Get a partner, share with your partner what bless you the most in this service. Pastor said many things today. Which of them blessed you? The more. What are you taking home from this service? Okay, so we we'll take our closing charge and then you cast your offering. So make sure you cast your offering before you leave. Amen. Let's declare together all over the space. Are you ready? Let's go together. I'm standing on the platform of God's grace. Amen. God bless you. You're going home safely. And even in this season, nothing is ever going to go wrong with any of you. Don't hit the road with fear at any time of the year. God's hand is upon you. And you will come out victorious. Amen. God bless you. Love and love before you leave this place. And give your offering.